In this video, we're going to talk about how you can calculate the forward rate based on yields from zero coupon bonds. So when we say the forward rate, what we're talking about is the interest rate that we could guarantee today, right now, for a loan or investment that's going to occur at some point in the future. Could be two years from now, three years from now, but we're going to lock in this rate today. So in an example, we could say for, let's say that you, uh, the forward rate for year two for the second year would be the rate that you could get today, assuming that you wanted a one-year investment that was going to start one year from right now. So, so let's say we're right here. We're at period zero, and we're wanting to lock in an interest rate, and this interest rate is going to be for a one-year investment that's going to go from year one to year two, the end of year one. So that's one year from now to the end of year two. Okay, so right here we're not going to have any investment, but we're locking in the rate right now, and we'll have 6.1%. Uh, that'll be our rate for this period here, right? So at the end of one year from now, that's right here, this starts and then it ends right here at the end of year two. And we're locking in that rate today, even though this investment or, or loan, this doesn't start until a year from now. So that's a forward rate and we just can denote it with an F and a subscript two to mean forward rate for year two. So we can go ahead and compute the forward rate. Obviously we just have a given here in the example, but if we didn't know it, if we didn't know the, the forward rate, for a given period, we could actually use yields from zero coupon bonds to go ahead and calculate. For, and here's how this works. We can say, well, look, we know the rate for a, a one year zero coupon bond, let's say that's 3.5%. And then the rate for a two year zero coupon bond is 4.25%. Then we can actually back out the forward rate. So let me kind of put some numbers to it and we'll, we'll walk through it. Basically, just to make sure you understand conceptually, though. So when we say that we know the rate for a one-year zero coupon and the rate for a two-year zero coupon, what we're saying is if you bought a zero coupon bond for one year, not, let me actually put, so here's year zero, that, that's, that's right now, year one, year two. So what we're saying is that if we know the yield for a one-year zero coupon, that's 3.5%. But if you also instead bought a zero coupon for two years, for the whole two year period, you'd get charged 4.25%. So now we're wanting to know the specific, what if you bought, what, what, what if you bought something and you wanted the rate just for this, just this portion right here, right? We know the whole thing is 4.25% and we know this part is 3.5% from the yields, right? From these, these numbers here, but we want to know this part. And that's the forward rate, right? This investment wouldn't start until right here and it would end here. We want to know that rate and we can back it out. So let's go about doing that. So basically, we can think about having two different strategies, right? So one strategy would be to buy a zero coupon bond right here for 3.5%, a one year zero coupon, and then to also simultaneously lock in a, a forward rate for year two, right? Now, Alternatively, we could just buy a two-year zero coupon, right? And that would be this strategy right here. That would be your return. If you bought a zero year, or excuse me, a two-year zero coupon bond, your return would be just you know 1.0425 squared because we're just taking this this rate of return for those each of those two periods. Now we know that these two strategies, that the buying a one-year coupon and then locking into the forward rate for year two. And then as opposed to just buying a zero coupon for two years, that those strategies should be equal in terms of what the return is. Because if they weren't, then there'd be some kind of arbitrage opportunity here, right? So really, we're just looking at either way, there's risk-free, right? These are should be kind of equivalently, we're thinking about it as the same return, because either way, we're locking in the interest rates today. So we can just go ahead and we can calculate this out and just solve and see what we get. So we'll get, let's see, we have 1.035 times the forward rate for year two. It's gonna be equal to, and that's gonna be, and I'm gonna just round here, so if my numbers are off a little bit from yours, it's gonna be 1.0868. Let me give myself a little more space. And so then we're gonna have the forward rate for year two. We just divide each side by this 1.035 and that's going to give us 1.05. Again, I'm just I'm just rounding here. And then we can also just think of that as that's going to be a 5% return. 
So what does that mean? That means that if we come back here, this number, this return, that or that forward rate for year two is 5%. So if we bought a zero coupon bond for one, or one year coupon bond and then entered into a forward rate for year two at 5%, that would give us roughly the same return as just buying a two-year zero coupon bond. And if it's off just by a decimal or so, it's just due to rounding. And so that that's for just looking at something with just two periods. Now you might say, well, how can we generalize this to multiple periods? Well, it's really nice. We've got this formula. So the forward rate for any year, when I say, when I have this little N, this subscript N, that's just the period that we're talking about. So like the forward rate for year two, the forward rate for year three, we can actually calculate that using this formula. And we have y, YTM here, yield to maturity. That's just the yield on a zero coupon bond. So yield of zero coupon. And when we're talking about, we've got this little subscript N, so that's period N for like above, right? For, for year two, YTM two would be the rate on the yield on the, the two year zero coupon bond. So I'm gonna, this is a little abstract, so let's jump into an example and show how we would go about using uh, th this right here, this formula. So let's say, and I'm gonna make sure you have plenty of, plenty of space to see this. Well, we'll scroll down in a moment here. So let's say that we have a, a set of yields here. Here are zero coupon yields. We know for a one year zero coupon, a two year zero coupon, three year, and so forth, all the way to a five-year zero coupon bond. And we have these different yields. Here's our yield to maturity for each of these zero coupon bonds, right? So these are our yields. And now we can use those yields to calculate the forward rates. Uh, forward rate for year one is, is easy. That's just the yield to maturity right now on the one-year zero coupon. So that's just going to be 4.1%, right? That's just mechanical. But now we want to say, well, what about this forward rate for year two? And well, let me let me change colors here. We'll mix it up a bit. So we want to know the forward rate for year two. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to use this formula. Right? So we have one plus the yield for period n. What is period n? Well, we're talking about let's see here. We've got the forward rate for year two. So n is two, right? N is two because we're just looking at forward rate for year two. Here's that n. So then we're going to have the one over the yield for period N. Okay, so that's 3.8%. So one plus 3.8% is going to be 1.038. And we square that because of this, we raise it to the nth power, right? And again, we're talking about period, period two here, N equals two. So it's just 1.038 raised to the second power. That's this part right here. And then in the denominator, we're going to have the yield from the previous year. So see this n minus 1? So we said, well, n is 2 because we're looking at the forward rate for period 2. So we just go and say, okay, well, actually, the yield for the previous, the n minus 1, that yield is 4.1%. So we look and we say, okay, look, here we go. We'll just add that 1 plus the yield is going to be 1.041. Now, we raise it to the n minus one power, but n minus one it was n is two, so that we're raising it basically to the first power. Let's put that there, that one. Uh, we don't even need that there though, obviously, right? Because you just raise anything to the first power, it's it's just itself. So now we can just go ahead, and then of course we subtract one, just like we do up here. So now we can go ahead, we could calculate this, and our forward rate for year two is going to be 1.035, or 3.5%. I'm just saying that this here just means equivalent. So just think of it as 1.035 is just saying we have a 3.5% forward rate for year two. Now, similarly, when we go to do forward rate for year three, we're just going to say, okay, well, let's take the yield for year three, right? So that 4.3%. And we just add that in there, we, we add one to it, and then we raise it to the nth power. And the n over here is gonna be three, right? So we just take 1.043, that's just one plus the yield, raise it to the nth power, which is three, 
and then we divide it by the yield from the previous year. The yield from, in this case, uh, n minus 1, so it's 3 minus 1 is, is 2. So the yield from year 2, which was 3.8%, right? So now in the denominator, we have 1.038, and we raise that to the second power because we're raising it to the n minus 1 power. And then, of course, if we subtract 1 again, and so now we can go ahead and that will give us our yield. And we're going to have 1.053, and then we can just think of that as 5.3%. Okay, now I, I've, I've actually calculated all the way through uh, the fifth period here. So I give you all the forward rates. And, and again, here just n is going to be 4, n is going to be 5. I'm not going to belabor the point and go through all these. I'm just going to give you the rates real quick in case you want to calculate these out for yourself. Here we're going to have 5.1% is going to be our forward rate and then 6.0%. Now, I would like to, you, you might have noticed something already. Now, and this is this is kind of an interesting fact that we have here, is when the yield, and we're talking about the zero coupon yield here for period n. So, so let's say right here for period three, let's say n is three, that we're talking about. When that yield, when that yield is greater than the previous year's yield, okay. So let's take a look. For example, period three is that greater? This this yield greater than this one? Yes. When that's the case. Then the forward rate for that period, for that period n, so forward rate for n is, this would be right here, 5.3%. That's going to be greater than the yield of the zero coupon bond for period n. So in other words, let's think of this. Since 4.3% is greater than 3.8, than the previous year's zero coupon yield, then that means that the forward rate for that period and for in this case period three the forward rate for year three is going to be higher that's going to be higher than the yield so 5.3 percent so because 4.3 percent is higher than the 3.8 from the previous year then the forward rate for that for period three is actually going to be higher than the zero coupon yield and that will always be true now the reverse is also true so if the yield is actually less than the previous year's yield in terms of the zero coupon yields then the forward rate for period N is actually going to be less than the yield of the zero coupon bond for period N.